In this video, we're going to talk about the conical pendulum. I think this is video number 26 in our series on analytical mechanics. The playlist for all the videos is at the website, digital-university.org. Uh, the conical pendulum is a simple enough system to set up, but to discuss it in proper detail, it does get quite complicated. So we're going to discuss the angular momentum of the system, um, in this video, and we'll probably have to break it up into two parts. But here we have then just a string with a weight on this end of it, and we're just simply rotating then the string with its attached weight in a circle like this. So that the string makes an angle theta with respect to the axis of rotation. It has a length L. The circle has a radius r, which is the same thing as l times the sine of theta. And here's the mass with gravity pulling straight down. Now, before we consider the angle of the momentum of the system, let's first of all consider the forces that are acting. Gravity pulls straight down, and then there's a tension in the string. But let's look at these forces in more detail. Then when we do that, we'll consider what is the angular momentum. So here's the essence of our setup. The string of length L makes an angle of theta with the axis of rotation. The circle of radius R, and here's our M, the mass, gravity pulling straight down. Then here's the tension. And notice we can resolve the tension into a vertical component and a horizontal component. If this angle was theta, then that angle right there is also theta. This is 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees. This angle here is 90 minus theta. So this has to be theta so that this and this add up to 90 degrees. So the vertical component of the tension is just T times the cosine of theta. And the horizontal component of the tension, which is pointing in this direction, that's T times the sine of theta. Now, as our mass goes about the circular motion in this direction, it stays right in the plane of the circle. It's not bobbing up and down. So that means that this downward force is canceled by this by the upward force. So we know that T times the cosine of theta equals mg. And these two forces cancel each other. So there's only one resultant force on our mass, and that's T times the sine of theta pointing towards the center of the circle. Now we know that when we have circular motion, there has to be a centripetal force of magnitude mv squared over r. And where that centripetal force is coming from, of course, is t times the sine of theta. So t times the sine of theta has to equal this in magnitude in order to make this circular motion possible. Now what we want to do is let's talk then about the angular momentum of our system. And let's take it first of all, consider the angular momentum with respect to point C. Now we know that a general expression for the angular momentum is some position vector and the cross product with the linear momentum. Well here, if we're considering it with respect to point C, we could imagine then that we're up here looking down on the system. 
So all we're going to see then is just this mass M going about in a circular motion. So it's going to be like this. Here's point C. The circle has a radius R. And the momentum, well, the velocity is going to be like this, perpendicular to it. It's going in this direction. So MV will be like this, perpendicular to the radius vector. So the angular momentum about point C is this. Across the momentum mv and its magnitude is just the magnitude of that radius vector r times the times the magnitude of the ve of the momentum that's just mv times the sine of the angle the angle is 90 degrees so that's just one so here is then the angular momentum with respect to point C. It's R, M, V. Well, this is constant. This is constant. And we are rotating it about the circle with a constant angular velocity omega. So this is constant. So with respect to point C, the angular velocity always has constant magnitude. Now, what is the direction of the angular momentum with respect to point C? And does it change as the mass moves to different points of the circle? Well, what we're at right here, then, of course, this is always a fundamental equation. But let's set it up. Here's R. in this direction. The momentum mv is here. But remember now, when taking cross products, we have to have them lined up like this. Then to see the direction, we just simply take this and curl it around. So we see that the angular momentum is pointing upward in the positive z direction when the mass is here. But suppose now the mass is over here on this side. The magnitude of the angular momentum is the same. But what about the direction? So here, it's like this. And now the velocity is in this direction, and so is the linear momentum. So we want to take that cross product. So we have R and then the velocity is like this, but we have to line them like this to take the cross product. And then to get the direction, again we remember we imagine taking our right hand and wrapping R till it matches V. And when we do that, we see that our thumb is pointing upward so that it's in the positive z direction. So we see that with respect to point C, the angular momentum, it always has a constant magnitude, and it's always pointing upward in this direction. So with respect to point C, the angular momentum has the same magnitude, and it also has the same direction. So with respect to point C, the angular momentum is conserved. Now, let's talk about then the, uh, the torque about point C. We say that we've just shown that the momentum about point C 
that's conserved. So it's time derivative zero. But we also know that the torque is the time derivative of the momentum. So if the time derivative of LC is zero, then that means that the torque about C should also be zero. Now, remember from our previous videos, in videos 16, 17, and 18, we discussed angular momentum and torque in quite a bit of detail. In general, the torque is some position vector taking a cross product with the force. Now again, here is our setup, very simple. Circle, there's point C. In this case, the position vector is just the radius vector of the circle. So for the torque with respect to point C, it's R cross F. Now what force is at this point? Well, that's what we talked about just a few minutes ago. There's only one resultant force at this point. That's T sine of theta that has to have this magnitude that supplies our centripetal force. So we can say that, and that is pointing in this direction. So the torque at point C is this, and we'll just say cross the centripetal force, but that has to equal the magnitude of this, which is just R, times the magnitude of this, which has to be mv squared over R, times the sine of the angle between them. Well, this is going in this direction. This is pointing, is quite, is right aligned with that, pointing in the opposite direction. So it's a sine of 180 degrees. That's zero. So the torque C indeed does come out to be zero, as it has to be, because the angular momentum about point C, as we just demonstrated, is conserved. So I think that will be it for this video. We wanted to show for this part of our demonstration is that the angular momentum of our conical pendulum taken about point C, it is constant in magnitude. It's just the magnitude of the position vector r, which is the magnitude of the radius of the circle times the linear momentum, and its direction is always the same. It's pointing upward. So the angular momentum with respect to point C is conserved. The torque with the ball point C is zero. Now what we'll do in the next video is consider the same setup, only now we want to consider what is the angular momentum of our conical pendulum taken with respect to point Q. Here it gets more interesting, and to do that, we're going to have to look at our system in a lot more detail. That we will consider then in the next video.